Welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah, and I'm back with my mom. This Hello. is Nancy. Hi. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to talk about another project that you can do at home yourself, and that's to make your own beeswax candles. So um, mom's actually the one who's been starting this craft. I haven't uh, poured my own candles yet, but I'm eager to learn. So what first got you inspired to start doing this? I use a lot of candles, and I really prefer beeswax candles over paraffin, mm -hmm. which is a petroleum product, mm -hmm. or even soy candles. Beeswax is just a lot nicer. It smells nice, and um, it helps the beekeepers. If people buy their wax, they make a little extra money. Right, because they always have excess wax after they harvest their honey. So Right. Yeah, and we use the beeswax in our um, fa uh, facial care products, too. Yeah. Right, and beeswax candles retail are extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. And since I use a lot of them, I just thought, I can do this myself. Right. And whereas a um, beeswax tea light candle, like this little candle, mm -hmm. costs about $1.49 at the store, mm -hmm. I can make them for less than 50 cents a piece. Right. Um, and even get that cost down considerably depending on how you purchase wax, which we'll talk about in a minute. Right, okay, that's good. So we need a few um, tools, right? Yes. So. And I am going to show a lot of specialized candle making equipment, but in some cases you can just improvise with things you have around the house. Mm -hmm. Um, except for a few items. Right. I would suggest you get the sort of pro candle making gear. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth the investment. So you can not only make these for yourself, but they make really nice gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also sell them at craft fairs if you want to. Right. We just wrapped up the Bethel pop-up shop, which you guys may have seen if you follow us on Instagram. And uh, Mom was kind enough to share some of her stash of homemade candles, and we sold out. So... They are a very popular gift, especially around this time of year when it's getting dark and people want a little extra light in their house. Yes. So how do we get started? Well, first of all, you need some beeswax. <laughs> and there are a number of ways to purchase beeswax. Um, the two main categories being unfiltered, which would be cheaper, but you have to filter it yourself, which we'll talk about. And then you can buy beeswax that's already been filtered. And typically that comes in one pound blocks. Mm -hmm. um, some people use a kind of hexagonal shaped mold, but you're gonna have something about this size to right. deal with. Yeah. Um, you can buy beeswax in little molds that's been poured in little molds, but that's extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. So the least expensive way would be the unfiltered wax. Right, and often that comes in odd-shaped blobs. Um, we don't have one here to show you, but it can be a five to seven pound kind of big brick, um, and then you would have to melt that down. Right, right. right. Yeah. So to filter wax, if you look on YouTube, everybody has their own little system of doing this. Um, mm -hmm. I prefer to just melt the unfiltered wax and pour it through a filter. And for a filter, you can use any number of things. Old pantyhose, um, the finest grade of cheesecloth, which I think they call, call 90. It, it's by numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Depending on how fine it is. 90 grade. And, yep. and I would use maybe a couple of layers of that. Mm -hmm. Or you can use coffee filters. I've seen people just use paper towels. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to use anything like cloth or any kind of paper product, it will have wax left on it, obviously, when you're filtering the wax. And if you have a wood stove or a fireplace, or if you like fires outside, campfires, bonfires, mm -hmm. whatever, don't throw that away because that wax soaked paper or mm -hmm. cloth makes a fabulous fire starter. Oh, okay. So yeah. s save those things. <laughs> there you go. And another, another reuse. Yeah. Right. Take your old used cheesecloth, clean, but used cheesecloth, and then use it again. 
Right. It's a great tip. Yep. So um, I often, when, after I melt the wax and filter it, I often pour it into little inexpensive rubbery soap molds and make little blocks like this. The reason being, when you get around to making candles or skincare products, whatever, it's a lot easier to deal with this size than this size. Mm -hmm. So to melt something like this, you need a double boiler kind mm -hmm. of pan. And if you don't have a double boiler or you don't want to use your cooking pots for this process, mm -hmm. then you can purchase inexpensively a device like this. It's just a pot insert with a handle on it and it has a nice lip on it. Mm -hmm. And you can actually melt a pound, pound and a half of wax in something like this. Right. So yep. I would recommend getting one of these if you if you don't want to use your Right, and I use that for my solid lotion bars too. Right, because they have wax in them, so right. um, it's easy to pour. And I agree. You also can see on this pot, even though we do clean our utensils between uses, you have a little bit of a film on here from the wax, and so you probably don't want to use your kitchen cooking utensils for that. Even though right. it's it is edible and it's not going to hurt you, but um, it will make your pots filmy. So you might want to spend a little bit of money on something like that. Right, yeah. and, and those are not expensive mm -hmm. at all. So, um, once you've gotten your wax melted and filtered, then what I use to actually pour candles is I have this little pouring pot, and you can get something similar to this almost anywhere if you look for chocolate melting pots or those kind of stainless steel little pitchers that baristas use when they heat up the hot milk to okay. make you a latte or what that works. Right. Any kind of little utensil like that will work fine. This is pretty heavy stainless steel. Um, I like these because the handle gives me a lot of control when I'm pouring. Mm -hmm. um, and the thicker stainless steel will retain the heat so you won't have to keep reheating it. Heating right. your wax up. But a yeah. lot of people just use a Pyrex measuring cup. Oh, and, yeah. and that works perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So heavy glass one. Yeah. You, you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, I made myself some little notes here so I wouldn't forget to tell you things. So as far as melting the wax, uh, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit approximately. But beeswax will melt at about 145 degrees. Mm. So you don't have to get the water in your pots boiling. You just need it to be right below the simmering point. And in fact, if you overheat beeswax, it will discolor mm -hmm. if you get it over 185 degrees. And I've gotten beeswax candles or little, you know, things of beeswax that are sort of brown colored. Mm -hmm. And, um, and sorry, we have someone coming up the driveway. <laughs> um, and it will discolor it, and then you use this, you lose this beautiful, beautiful golden color that you have. Right. So we were talking about temperatures. Mm -hmm. That beeswax melts at 145 degrees, and you don't want to heat it over 185 because you will discolor it and right. lose its pretty golden color. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important to remember when you're working with beeswax that you are working with a flammable substance, but the flash point of beeswax is 400 degrees. So right. it's highly unlikely that your <laughs> stove is gonna burst into flames or anything right. like that. Right, unless you like walked off and left it unattended or something right. that you right. wanna do anyway. So. Um, some people do melt beeswax, especially if it's very, very dirty and they're, they're filtering it themselves. They, do, they put it in a pot of water. Mm, okay. And what happens is the water and the beeswax separate and you can go back sometime later after it's all cooled off and take your chunk of beeswax out and all the gunk will be on the bottom and they just scrape that off. Oh. But usually to get it really clean doing that, you would have to melt it a few times. Mm -hmm. So um, I, yep. I prefer not to use the water, but if you look on YouTube or any place, you'll see a lot of people doing that. Mm -hmm. 
Makes sense. And you want to filter this because it will make your candles burn cleaner, right? That's the, kind of the whole point. It's right. Not just, it's not just a cosmetic, uh, like a, you know, making your candles look pretty. It's um, Right, because if you had a lot of trash in the beeswax, it would actually clog up your wick. Mm -hmm. Or the wick would get that black carbon soot stuff all over it in mm -hmm. blobs. And it just makes your candles not actually work very well. Mm -hmm. But... Um, so I think it is important to filter it properly if you're going to filter it yourself. But you don't have to. You can buy it already filtered. It's just more expensive that way. Mm -hmm. So the next step then, once you have your nice filtered beeswax and you've melted it in whatever pot you're going to melt it in, or in a Pyrex cup, then you need to pour the melted beeswax into an appropriate mold, depending on what kind of candles you're making, obviously. Mm -hmm. So the first kind I made, because it's the simplest, is tea lights, little tea light candles. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have to put these in some kind of holder um, to burn them, because this gets hot. I prefer the aluminum cups. You can also buy plastic ones, but we're trying very hard to avoid plastic these days, so... Right. You can buy these, they come in packages of 100, mm -hmm. and in addition to your little mold, you also need a wick. Mm -hmm. I'll hold that up while you talk about it. Yeah. So, so this the has wick, a little piece on the bottom. Right, it has a little metal piece on the bottom, and the wick itself is coated so that it will stand up straight. So the trick is you have your little cup and you have your wick and you have to put the wick in the little cup. But I found when you start to pour that these want to scoot around and, and you want your wick to be in the middle of your candle, obviously. So after a little experimentation, I found that the easiest thing to do was to dip this little bottom into some melted wax and then just stick it in there. Mm -hmm and you wind up with this. Mm -hmm. So that's all ready to go. Right. Um, and then what I do is I have my melting pot on one side of my stove top mm -hmm. and on the other half of my stove top I put a cookie sheet which is lined with cooking parchment. Mm -hmm. And the reason I use the parchment is if you have any drips or spills or anything the wax will not adhere to it. You can just pick it right off and throw it back in the melting pot. Mm -hmm. Because wax is hard to get off of a lot of surfaces. So you, you want to set yourself up so that if you make little drips and things, you're not going to have a big mess to clean up afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that's the parchment is the easiest thing to do by far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a couple of little tips when you are pouring into these prepared excuse me, tea light molds, is first of all, you don't want to pour hot wax directly on this wick because it will melt the coating on it that makes it stand up straight and it will flop over mm -hmm. into the, into the <laughs> it, it's, it's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> so just pour next to it, but not directly on top of it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is wax shrinks quite a bit as it cools. So when you're pouring tea lights, you want to fill these up till the melted wax almost starts to brim like it's going to run over. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, when it cools, it'll look like you didn't fill it up. Um, it'll look like you have three-fourths of a tea light instead of a nice right. one like this. And that may not matter so much just for your own use, but if you're giving them as a gift, obviously, or especially if you're selling, selling them. Selling them, right. You, you want know. them to look like that so that, that right. the wax is all the way up to the top. Right. Um, so that's tea lights. And I recently made 90 of them in, mm -hmm. in a couple of hours for the craft show mm -hmm. and sold them in little boxes of 10. And so that's pretty easy to do. I have since found a mold. It's a flat silicone mold with little holes in it like this, or little indentations, I should say. And I can I could pour 15 tea lights at a time. Mm 
using mm -hmm. that mold. Mm -hmm. And then you just pop the candle out of the mold and drop it into the little cup. Right. And, and those like all the molds we're talking about, they're either the aluminum ones that you're going to give with the candle, mm -hmm. or they're made out of silicone, which also releases from the, the wax right. really nicely. So. And we're going to look at one of those in just a second. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to pour tapers. Now to make taper candles you can dip but that takes forever and yeah. that is a real skill. It's hard to get a nice smooth mm -hmm. not crooked not lumpy looking mm -hmm. symmetrical candle dipping. Yeah. I, re I remember trying this one summer I think it was at a you know, like a YMCA camp or something, we would right. hand it candles, and they looked um, pretty homely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they, they will. They'll look homely for sure. <laughs> so what I use, and you can buy metal candle molds, mm -hmm. but those things can be difficult to use. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do this quite a lot, either for yourself or, or to give us gifts or whatever, I think it's worth investing in these sort of professional silicone taper molds and these are molds that produce a six inch candle actually it comes out this way mm -hmm. um, you can get them for eight inch 10 inch 12 inch tapers if you want the really tall ones I mm -hmm. prefer the, the shorter ones myself but mm -hmm. whatever you like so you buy these and I have a little wooden rack that looks sort of like a test tube holder mm -hmm. <laughs> only it's bigger and these will stand up in the rack. Oh nice, yep. The other thing you need is wicking and for beeswax tapers you get number two wicking. It's braided cotton wicking comes mm -hmm. in a roll like that. And then the other absolutely essential tool, and this is not expensive, is something called a wicking needle which is basically a piece of copper wire that's very very sharp on the tip and it has an eye in the other end. Mm -hmm. And the reason you need that is you thread this with your wicking and then you have to stick it through the bottom of this mold and pull the wicking up. Mm -hmm. and, and you really can't do that without this tool. That would be very hard to do. Um, right, because there's no there's no predefined hole here. You're just kind of... Well, there is a little tiny one. one. You kind of have to find where it is, but it closes up so that the mold won't leak. Right. So yeah. it's a tiny little hole in there. Mm -hmm. um, and what most people do who make these on a regular basis is they use a long piece of, of wick. So I can pour this candle, and when it's hardened up, I just pull it out, and, and then my mold is still threaded. Mm -hmm. And then I can pour another one and pull it out some more <laughs> like mm -hmm. that. And it just makes the whole thing easier because you don't have to keep re-threading your your mold all the time. Mm -hmm. So then you let these sit and a lot of people use a release spray in here to make sure you get really nice smooth candles. You can use either cooking spray or um, you can get silicone mold release spray. It's made specifically to make different kinds of molds release whatever you've poured into them. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. So you just do that, and this is a little trickier because we talked about the fact that cooling wax shrinks, mm -hmm. so you really have to keep an eye on these because I usually pour six or eight at a time, um, mm -hmm. and by the time I've gotten to the last one, the first one has already shrunk down about this much, mm -hmm. and you want to keep pouring a little more wax and a little more wax in there as it shrinks, but you want to do it before the, the wax gets hard. Otherwise, you will be able to see layers of wax on your candle and mm -hmm. it will look ugly. Yeah. So you really have to keep an eye on this. And as it starts to shrink, just keep topping it off. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was going to show you is that when you're pouring, when you're, sorry, I was looking for my bobby pin. When you're pouring, you need to keep this wick taut. 
and centered in the mold. And a lot of people use little pieces of bamboo skewer and they tie the wicking around it or whatever. But a bobby pin actually works great because it acts like a clip. It's like an alligator clip. It right. has that little curved part on it. Yeah. Right. So you put you put the bobby pin on there and pull up and this is you can position this and your wick is nice and taut and it's not gonna go anywhere. Mm -hmm while you're pouring. So you just pour in there and you've got your wick just like you need it. Mm -hmm. So bobby pins work fine Great for that. Um, and I recent, it's almost impossible to get the bottoms of these per perfectly flat because you're topping it off. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they come out and they really don't look all that great. I read a great tip recently. Mm -hmm. You can heat up a little pan the woman who was giving the tip uses an electric skillet, but I don't have one. But any little pan, you can just heat it up slightly mm -hmm. and just set your, just hold your taper on it mm -hmm. once the pan is warm for a second. And it will melt the bottom just enough to make it nice and so it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it covers up the bottom of the wick too. Right. Yeah. So. Very nice. And how, how much wax would you say you need to make? A batch of a given candle size. Well, from your experience, a pound like this will mm -hmm. make thirty or thirty-two tea lights. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I haven't paid quite as close attention on the tapers, but I would imagine I can probably make eight or ten mm -hmm. tapers like this out of mm -hmm. out of the a pound of beeswax. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the pouring pot goes, especially when you're a rookie, I would not fill this more than about half full. If you get it too full, it's much harder to pour. Sure. You have a lot more control if it's... But since I make these little bars because I'm filtering my own wax, I can get two or three of these in here. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is if I'm finished and I have wax left over, I just leave it in there. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. And then... Next time I'm ready to make candles, I just heat this up and I'm mm -hmm. all ready to go. And how do you heat this or keep it warm? Do you have a pot of water? Handy? I just set it in a pot of water. Uh huh. Yeah. You just want to make sure you don't have too much water because this will want to float and it'll tip over and it could get water in it or make mm -hmm. a mess. So just make sure it's resting firmly on the bottom of the pot of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. And then I imagine these, particularly with that thicker mold, these would take a while to cool completely. So do you leave them overnight usually before you try to get them out? I think it's advisable to leave them for several hours, not j just until they're cool to the touch, but actually longer than that. Because mm -hmm. I think if you try to pull them out too soon, once again, you won't get smooth edges. Right. With tiny little bits of wax might not all come out mm -hmm. smoothly. Yeah. I imagine you could also smush your candle because what I've noticed in making the, um, the lip balms is that they will be cold and hard on the outside and the inside will still be a jelly. Yes. And so if you try to move them around, you're going to disturb that jelly and then you'll make a mess. Right. So you want to leave them. That's definitely true. Cool. And if you were going to make things like pillar candles, mm -hmm. that's a real issue because if you're, if you're not pouring and topping it off properly, you, um, when it starts to shrink, sometimes it'll get a skin over the top, but the inside's not solid, mm -hmm. but it'll continue to shrink. And if you could get a hole, a big an empty cavity inside your pillar candle, mm -hmm. and that's dangerous because when the candle burns down to that point, it's not going to have any wax, but it's going to have a long piece of wick, and it could really flare up, mm -hmm. and, and that would not be good. So if you're pouring things like votives or pillar candles... You really have to pay attention to what you're doing and make sure you don't have any voids voids inside your candle. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. But these are my two favorite kinds, the tapers and the tea lights. So. Right. Yeah. I like the tea lights a lot. We have a lot of little holders that we've accumulated over the years right. for one reason and another. And I, I like them just around, you know, around the living room when we're enjoying, especially, like I said, when it's dark out. So. Yeah. And, um, my advice about burning these is if you light it and only burn half of it, say, don't trim the wick. Okay. If you do, 
it won't have a big enough flame mm -hmm. to melt the rest of the wax mm -hmm. and it'll burn a little while and then go out and you'll have wax left in your little cup mm -hmm. so if you want it, the wick to consume the whole candle don't trim the wick so much okay great so i think that's was everything i had on my notes okay well i think that was very instructive you know by you said that you'd been kind of doing a lot of research and there mm. are a lot of videos out there that show you you know a couple of tips here and there but we wanted to kind of consolidate all of Nancy's knowledge and experience into one video and I encourage you all to either try candle pouring um, you can find uh, bulk beeswax I would say go to your local market or go to your farmers market and look for the local honey um, and talk to that person they right. may have beeswax that they're willing to sell you for um, you know less expensively than you can order it online um, we also have a large cooperative here in Vermont called Vermont Apiary or Champlain Valley Apiary, and they have bees, but I think that they work with other beekeepers too. So you may have something similar in your state. Um, or a beekeepers association, if you can't find a local place, contact your local beekeepers association and they can for sure appoint you to some of their members that would have a supply of wax. Right, I, I really think that's the best thing because if you go to a store and buy this, mm -hmm. filtered beeswax like this, you can pay $14 a pound for this. Mm -hmm. And we made a bulk buy of unfiltered wax mm -hmm. and got it for six fifty a pound. Right. And it really does help the beekeepers because they make more money mm -hmm. off of their hives that way. Right. And you get this wonderful resource and you can use beeswax to make all kinds of things. Right. Um, Candles, salves, lotions, all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about saving your wax soaked paper filtering paper mm -hmm. but for gifts i saw something recently where someone had just taken some dried pine cones thoroughly dried pine cones mm -hmm. tied a little piece of wick around them and dipped the whole thing in beeswax mm -hmm. and you can give them to people as if you have fireplaces or wood stoves you mm -hmm. can give them a little basket of those as fire starters for a gift nice and they're they're decorative you know just to set out too so when you're not using them you could you right know, it's like a little fall decoration yeah right and so, or some people who like to collect leaves like mm -hmm. you can collect leaves in the fall and maybe put them in a book to make them nice and flat mm -hmm. and then you can dip those in beeswax to preserve oh, them fun. and make little deco you know you could put them on a wreath or do all kinds of things right like that. oh that's fun yeah. yeah so there's all kinds of things you could do yeah I love that. Great. Well, um, have fun uh, making your beeswax candles and ornaments. And let us know if you try any of these things. We'd love to see what you make. Um, I hope the light comes back into uh, your universe wherever you are really soon, um, even if you have to make some light yourself. And uh, thanks for joining us. Um, tune in next time. We'll have more tips for you. And happy holidays. Happy holidays.